Hello everyone, I'm D-Mind, the mind of one and all, and welcome back to another episode of No One But You. So in the last episode, well, we confronted Chinatsu, and then she ran away from us again, and this time she's avoiding us entirely. And then we find out from Mega... Well, we did... We kind of, find, kind of found out a little bit more about her from Megami. And... I... Yeah, she's pretty much a ghost at this point. She is a ghost. I'm... It's... It's just... Yeah, it is. Except our main character, protagonist, doesn't know of this yet. So now we're gonna go to the bridge and ask around for her. Nobody... Oh wait, I don't think I read the last... Yeah, I don't think I read that last... Eh. Are you kidding me? Nah. Yeah. Seven houses into my search, nothing had changed. Alright, so you asked seven houses, huh? Nobody had heard of the Misaki family, let alone Chinatsu, and nobody recalled seeing a girl matching her description. The looks I received were odd, and I felt like a salesman walking from door to door, but it couldn't be helped. I hate door knockers as much as anybody, but desperate times call for desperate measures. I'll find Chinatsu, even if I have to ask everyone in town. I walked up to the next house and prepared myself for disappointment, simultaneously hoping for the best. The front door opened before my eyes, revealing an old woman within. It's your grandma or something, right? Yes? Wait, it's your old woman. Yes? Can I help you? Well, at least elderly people are generally nicer about refusing to help. Oh um, my... I was wondering, do you know if a um, Misaki family lives around here? The woman frowned in response to my question. Misaki? Yes, um, a friend of mine has been absent from school a while, so I've been worried about her, but I don't know where she lives. I've often seen her on the bridge near here, so I was thinking that. My voice showed off before I had even finished speaking. I had given the same spiel to several strangers already, and the only change was how I was refused. At best, I received a sympathetic look and a, I'm sorry, I hope your friend gets well soon. At worst, it was a look of irritation and a clip. And the clip, we don't know anything, please leave. So, what will the response be this time, I wonder? Oh, I do know a Misaki family. The name does ring a bell. It does? That's right, Misaki. Misaki. The woman repeated the name of, to herself as though trying to stir a memory of years gone by. Ah, yes, I believe a Misaki family used to live in this house. My husband and I bought it from them nearly a decade ago. As soon as the words left the mouth, I could feel this little sliver of hope I've been nursing inside my chest shudder. Oh my, are you alright? You look awfully pale. No, I'm fine. Even if she is the bearer of bad news, I don't want to worry this nice old woman. Are you sure this, the family was Misaki? Definitely. My memory might not be what it used to be, but I wouldn't forget something like that. And they lived here 10 years ago. Yes, my husband and I moved here to Okutama, because it's so peaceful. We were getting tired of life up in the city, and wanted to spend the rest of our days somewhere quieter. I remember how delighted my husband and I were when we found this house, as it was so cheap. It was almost as if the previous residents just wanted to be rid of it, though I can't imagine why. I slowed my breathing as I tried to calm down and think. Even if the previous owners of this house were called Misaki, they aren't necessarily the family I'm after. Misaki isn't an uncommon name after all. Chanatsu isn't even the only Misaki at my school. This must be a coincidence, a bit inconvenient, scary coincidence. Even so, I bet I better ask just to make sure. So, um, this Misaki family, did they, um, did they have a daughter called Chanatsu? A daughter? Hmm. The old woman placed one hand under her chin as she muttered to herself. I never met their daughter, but they did mention having one. They did? Yeah, it's not like me thing. I believe it was something like... Our daughter Chinatsu used to love it. Here too. After speaking with the with that old woman, I spent the rest of my time in a nauseating days. I tried to process all of the information at my disposal, work through the con con inconsistencies, but nothing added up. I don't understand. How could it be that the same Misaki family, even though I met and spoke with Chinatsu multiple times, well, have you considered the possibility that, like you, Misaki used to live here, then she moved out? I mean, assuming she's still alive, I know she's a ghost, but uh, another possibility is that she used to live here as a child, her family moved out, then now she came back again, just like how you did. 
you know, that's a possibility, but I know she's a ghost. That's not me. My imagination isn't nearly good enough to concord such a vivid, realistic human being. And what the odds that I imagine someone who really does exist? Even so, if what the old woman said is true, then I can't have met Shinatsu Mizaki. It's not possible. She could come back. According to that woman, Shinatsu and her family moved away from Okutama 10 years ago. <sighs> I just don't get it. I don't understand this at all. Feeling sick to my stomach, I stopped dragging my heels and started walking home. My head hurt and I could feel bile rising up my throat. But above all, what pained me was how much sense everything else began to make. That might be why none of the teachers knew Chinatsu and why I never saw her in the hallways at school. It also explains why Megami hasn't seen her since elementary school. It's because Chinatsu Misaki shouldn't be in Okutama anymore, she shouldn't exist. And yet, despite that, I saw her, didn't I? I spoke to her, I sat in the literary club, club room with her. We stood on the bridge together, we walked to school together. At that moment, I realized the disgusting truth. I was the only one. She not even told me that herself. She said she didn't have any other friends. I never saw anybody else interact with her, and she never mentioned other people. Now I know why. After all, how could a girl who isn't supposed to exist here have friends? Although my destination was supposed to be my own home, I soon found myself at Shinatsu's bridge. Where we're gonna get the bad ending? Or the good ending? Or the sharp power ending? I don't know. I held on to the cold steel bars, ignoring the bite of the night air. I looked out over the rushing dark blue water and screamed. What the hell is going on? Ignorant of the fact that I was in public and that anybody and everybody could hear me, I shut it out. Nobody answered me, of course. Nobody even showed their face. But for me, a person searching for answers, that wasn't good enough. What am I meant to do now? I shot it out again and I was still ignorant of the people around me. I must look pretty unbalanced to the to other people right now. A teenage boy in a school uniform shouting nonsense into the darkness. But I don't really care what they think. Right now, the only thing on my mind is Chinatsu. Alright, we return home. The second I finally arrived home, mom instantly noticed that something was wrong. Even if I hadn't slammed the door shut or arrived home so late, her keen senses would have picked up the, the bad vibes. So as I walked through the hall, the first sight to greet me was my mo mother's worried face. Hideaki, honey, what's wrong? Nothing. Are you sure? I'm sure, I just want to be alone for a little while. I brushed past my mother and made my way to the stairs. The way I'm feeling right now, I don't have the patience to put up with my mother's silly antics. As I set my foot on the first step of the staircase, my mother ignored my warning and called out after me. But Hidi, you have a face that says, I just won the lottery, but then a TV cat stole and ate my winning ticket. What? I pondered my mother's words for a second, wondering where on earth she heard such a ridiculous saying. What? Game, vision of all, anime had that. A cat lottery ticket. Was it? Uh, was it Princess Evangel, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, I believe that had a, a protagonist who won a lottery and then had a cat stolen it. <laughs> I found that my mother's words for a second, yeah. No, that's too far fetched to be an actual thing, in which case. Did that ever happen to you, Mum? <sighs> Wait, really? The world is a cruel place, honey. The Lord gives with one hand and takes away with the other. Wait, but the protagonist for that game was a male. Or is she? Wait, if this is connected. Maybe the protagonist is... I mean not the protagonist, the heroine. That that girl with the pink hair who was with the protagonist in Princess Evangel. That's your mother. Oh my god, you're not religious. That's right, and that story never happened either. Oh, never mind. It didn't? Nope. My mother winked as she spoke. But at least he stopped you in your tracks, did mister. So are you going to have a chat with me or not? Is or not actually an option? <laughs> oh Hidi, you say the silly things. I figured as much. Listen, you've been acting distant for a while now, and your loving mother wants to know the reason why. Yeah, alright. I've been avoiding telling my mother anything about Chinatsu, not wanting to worry her, but it seems to be having the opposite effect. I know she only wants to be what's best for me, so it must hurt her to see her only son so down. Mom's always been a rather light-hearted and cheerful person, but I know she really cares for me. In fact, I think it's because she cares about me that she's always so unrelentingly chipper. She's a lot more astute and far more responsible than she looks. Good, well then, sh shall we talk about this in the kitchen? Why the kitchen? Why not the living room? I don't know, I just like the kitchen more. It feels more homey. 
Because we sit there and eat meals as a family? Maybe. Or maybe it's just because that's where all the food is. I take back everything I just said about my mother being a responsible parent. Mom stared at me from across the kitchen table, her hands clapped together on the wooden surface. Alright, young man, what have you been up to? My mother glared at me as though grilling an inc a criminal for information. You know, when you look at me like that, it makes me feel like I'm being interrogated by the police. Oh? Was I being too much of a bad cop? Just a little. Hmm, I thought since this is a, situa a serious situation, I should try to sound serious to match, but maybe I went a little overboard. My mother cleared her throat and then resumed her line of questioning. So, Hidi, what's the matter? Is it a cute girl? Although my mother sounded like she was joking, she hit the nail right on the head. Am I really that transparent? Yes, that's right. Aha, uh -huh, I figured as much. Well, I'm not surprised it often is, with boys your age. I remember when I was a young lad. You were never a young lad. Ahaha, uh -huh, you got me there. Well, she worked. I mean, she has to be. Anyway, what happened? Did you and Megumi break up? Why? Why? Just why? Oh, I mean, young lad as in a young boy. Yeah, she was never a young boy. Unless she's trans. Why? Just why? Mom, I thought you said you were going to be serious. I am being serious. Your mother will be really troubled if her favorite pairing doesn't work out. Never mind. I was wrong to confide in you. I got up from my seat and headed for my room. Ah, oh, wait. I'm sorry. Mommy won't tease you anymore. Alright. I sat back down. So then, tell me. The playful smile on my mother's face disappeared, replaced by a serious expression completely unnatural for her. Is it because the cute girl rejected you? Is that why you bent you down? I... Uh, I suppose so in a manner of speaking. She wasn't very clear about it. Oh no, being rejected like that really is the worst. You don't know how they really feel, so you think you're still in with a chance, but when you try to get them to clarify, they give vague replies or ignore you. Exactly, that's exactly what's been happening. I haven't even managed to speak to her for a week now. Oh honey, I'm so sorry. I know how it feels, but being strung along like that, it's not good for the self-esteem. Well, I don't know if she's really stringing me along. It might be a bit more complicated than that. I'm sure she has her reasons. Perhaps she's too timid to reject you outright. Or maybe she herself doesn't understand her own feelings. Either way, you have your worth as a person. You deserve to be treated fairly. For any relationship to work, both parties must respect one another. If this girl isn't being clear with her feelings she, and she's hurting you, then I don't know if she respects you. No matter how pretty she is, Sidi, you'll be better off without her. Trust me, it's your worth the hassle. I, I know what you're saying, but I think there's a bit more to it than that. It's complicated. Oh, how is it complicated? If she's shy, she could at least write you a note in your shoe locker. Or has that gone out of fashion now? That kind of thing only happens in TV dramas. Actually, I don't know whether that ever happened because in my school I never had shoe lockers. I mean, we had lockers, not a shoe locker. When real people are too shy to admit, like they. Wait, when real people are too shy to admit they like somebody, they just dit around without acting on their feelings until it's too late. Hmm, maybe you're right. Letters in shoe lockers appear a lot in dramas when I was a little girl, but nobody in my school ever got asked out like that. To tell the truth, I was disappointed. I wanted to write a load of fake love letters and put them in random lockers just to see what would happen. That sure sounds like something mom would do. How, how positively evil. I like evil though, so that's fine. It's nice to know she was still this impulsive back when she was my age. I don't think she likes you could leave a letter in my shoe locker even if she wanted to. After all, I'm no longer sure she goes even she even goes to my school. Ah. My mother paused, staring at me while wearing a look of shock. Did you say Chinatsu, Hidi? That's right, Chinatsu Misaki. I met her a few months ago when we first moved to Okutama. Of course, you'll be our mother to know the details. Chinatsu Misaki. Yeah, I thought I was getting along with her, but then she vanished all of a sudden, almost like she never existed at all. I couldn't find her at school or in town. And, that, and when I tried to find out where she lived, I met an old woman who said Chinatsu and her family moved away from Okutama 10 years ago. I paused for a breath, only then realizing how quickly I'd spoken. I realized I might sound crazy, but how else can I tell the story? I'm just relaying what happened. Or at least what I think happened. Honestly, my story sounds ridiculous, even to me. It's like the plot of some stupid horror movie. Not even my, mo not even my mother, my light-hearted and fun-loving mother, could be expected to believe in this. Now that I've said it out loud, I'm not sure I believe it myself. She remembers it. She's always warning you about it. As I returned to reality, I noticed that my mother was still st silently staring at me. Mom? 
Mom, are you alright? I called up to my mother, but she didn't reply. She simply sat there, staring over my shoulder, her eyes vacant. Have I upset her? Was my story really that troubling? I guess any mother would be sad at the prospect of her only son slowly losing his mind. I, I'm sorry, Mom. This is this is why I didn't want to tell you about it. It just sounds so bizarre, I know, but it really did happen. Or at least, I think it did, I don't know. Hey, Deaki, you... Don't you remember? My mother finally spoke up with her, her voice heavy with worry. Remember what? Ah, no, of course you wouldn't. The doctors did say that I didn't want to trouble you. I thought it would be better if you didn't know, but maybe I was wrong. Doctors, are you talking about that accident? The one that occurred when I was a child? The reason why I remember so little from childhood. The reason why we initially moved away from Mukutama. Yes, I am. Um, my mother finally lifted her head, meeting my eyes with hers. Her expression was deadly serious and horribly, indescribably so crushingly sad. I'm sorry, Hedy, but there's something I've been hiding from you for, for a while now. Almost 10 years, in fact. My mother's words carried a lot of weight, but I could already guess what she was talking about. Although I know that something happened to me 10 years ago, I don't remember the incident itself. My mother always told me it was for the best, that I left the past behind and that I shouldn't ask too many questions. That must be it, right? What could possibly... What? What are you talking about? Hidi, you... You say you met Chinatsu Misaki, but you couldn't have. But you couldn't have. There's just no way. That accident 10 years ago, when you almost drowned, somebody went into the river to save you. It was that girl, with dark hair, the one you always used to play with. I don't know what happened exactly, but she went missing and... Her body, Hideaki. Her body was found washed up on the riverside. She must have heard fear herself trying to search for you and she... She... She was Misaki's daughter. Their only daughter. She was such a cute little thing. Even if she was a bit on the quiet side. Yes, I pretty much called it even from the beginning. I'm like, she's dead. She, she's dead. I knew it. Her name was Shinatsu. Shinatsu Misaki. Now I know why she seems so familiar. I really had heard that name before. Dimly a memory arose from within my mind, but buried deep in the marshy pits of my subconscious. There was a Shinatsu before. I used to know a Shinatsu. We were best friends, weren't we? All until that fateful day. Oh, this your old house? Flashback! That why do you- Oh yeah, we are, we are 10 years younger now. Dad, why do we always have to go to Sakura Gaoka? What's wrong with Sakura Gaoka? It's nice! Don't you love the smell of the refreshing air of the countryside? I pouted at my- uh, I have to do the young child voice. I pouted at my father's puffing cheeks out like a squirrel's. I don't think the air is refreshing. It's only 30 miles away from Shinsukai. Indeed, the physical distance may not be far, but there may as well be an entire galaxy between Sakura Gaoka and Shinsukai. Ah, 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 I don't know why I gave him this voice. For one thing, the hills in Sakura Gaoka have magnificent view on compare. Shinsukai has nothing of the sort. But it kind of fit his lines, the voice. Yeah, and Okutama has an arcade and an ice cream parlor. Let's just stay right here. Now, now, Hidi. My mother ruffled my hair, sporting a winning smile on her face. You don't need our kids or ice cream to have fun. We can make our own fun out here in the countryside. That's what you said last year and the year before that. And the year before that, but all we did was go on walks. I hate walking, it's boring. Oh, don't be like that, Mr. Grumpy. You should learn to appreciate the world around you a bit more. I don't want... I don't want to appreciate it. It stinks. Quite literally, Sakura Gaoka is a pretty secluded place. All the way up in the mountains, and there are sheep and cows everywhere. I wonder if we're gonna get a sprite of Ch Natsu and Hideaki as a child. Whenever we go for walks around here, the air smells so of manure. Ugh, just thinking about it makes me feel sick. Can we just stay here in Okutama instead? Most of my school friends are here, and I don't know anybody in Sakura Gaoka. Wait, whoops, I shouldn't do double click. We've been going to our summer house there for the last four years and each and every trip has been equally boring. Alright. If we have to go on holiday, why can't we go abroad? Rie's family is taking her pa is taking her to Paris for the summer. Rie's family might be taking her to Paris, but Rie's family is a lot richer than ours. 
That's right. Did you have a mother that famous actress? Shiori or something or other? Um, Shiori. Hmm. It's not Shiro. I mean, of course it's not Shiro, but you know, maybe the daughter. No, it's... Yeah, the daughter is not Shiro. A classy family like that would have to go abroad. Aha. I'm glad at that. My hands clash into fists. Are you saying we're not classy? I'm saying that I'd rather not eat snails for a whole week, Hidi. I might rather stay in good old Japan. That patted me on the shoulder, smiling happily. Now then, do you want to help us load the car, Hidi? I was in no mood to. Wait. I was in no mood to cooperate with my father. I hate going to Sakura Gaoka, and I hate the mountains, and I hate walking, and I really, really hate sheep. Oh, come on, I love sheep. I mean. I mean, they're cute, but that's all there is to it, you know? But they're cute. They go bad. That's something. Why don't mom and dad ever listen to me? I keep telling them that I don't want to go, but they just ignore me. It's not fair. This is basically child cruelty. Well, if they won't listen to me, then I won't listen to them. Hey, Hidi, where are you going? Hidi? Mom and dad called out after me, but I didn't listen. Instead, I continued to run, pumping my arms and legs again as hard as I could. Alright, shoot yourself. Make sure to come back when you get hungry. Dinner will be waiting for you on the table. Stupid mom and dad, why do they never listen to me? I powdered kicking at a loose rock on the ground with the tip of my shoe. I originally intended to hide out until nightfall when it would be too late to drive to Sakura Gaoka, but I soon realized that wouldn't work. If I do that, my parents will just put me in the car while I'm asleep. Honestly, wouldn't they even consider staying here for the summer break just this once? Ah, they are so annoying. I shot as I kicked another rock with the tip of my shoe. I kicked it a lot harder than I had intended and the rock flew up in the air, soon landing in the nearby river with a splash. I turned my head watching the falling rock when suddenly... Hey, what are you doing? The river wasn't empty as it usually would be. Instead, there was somebody swimming in there. I can't very well... I can't see very well from the distance, but it looks like a young girl. Her hair is black, floating on the surface of the water like spilled tar, and she seems to be struggling to keep up with her, the tide. Did she fall in? Is she drowning? Maybe she's in danger. Mom told me she, to never swim in this river. She said the currents was too fast, and I, and I get swept away. To swim, to further drive Mom's point home, I notice a wooden sign driven into the riverbank, which clearly reads, swimming is prohibited. I don't entirely know what prohibited means, but I'm smart enough to realize that girl shouldn't be in the river. Hey, are you alright? Hey! I ran over to the girl, extending my arm towards her as fast as I could. I reached out so far that I, that I worried that I overbalanced and fall into the water myself. I grabbed a nearby tree trunk for extra support, then I continued to reach out. Hey, can you hear me? I promise that you'll be okay, just grab onto my hand. Come on, you can make it. The girl lifted her head, her damn black hair falling around her shoulders and blink at me. It was only then that I realized she was wearing a swimming costume. Costume in a swimsuit. Does that mean she didn't fall in after all? She was swimming in the river just for fun? Having heard my frantic yelling, she began to paddle back to the riverbank. Though the current seemed strong, she pushed right through it, unhindered with such grace that she may as well have been walking on dry ground. I watched her dumbfounded as your hot blush slowly spread across my face. Oh, um, I I guess you could swim after all. The girl stepped out of the river and I finally got a good look at her. Alright, so we do get a sprite of Chow Shinatsu. Huh. Alright. Her hair was very long. Very long? It's semi-long. Unless this part we can't see goes down further into a pointy or something like that. But, you know, as far as I see it lands here, that's semi-long. Her hair was very long, almost down to her waist. Alright, she does have hair going down in the back, but... Honestly, it looks like it just ends... It doesn't look like it goes down to her waist. Yeah, it, it's... It's semi-long. Uh, and almost down to her waist, and the weight of it appeared to be dragging her head down. Her arms and legs were so thin that I wondered how such a fragile body was able to stand the rushing current of that river. She must be a lot stronger than she looks. The girl shook her head for a few moments, trying to dry her hair under the sunlight before she approached me. I have a question though, if she died all that years ago, ghosts don't grow up, they don't mature, they, how, that, how did she take on an adult form? Like, she, 
she died, she can go, she should stay as a child ghost, which I, I mean, well, realistically speaking, ghosts don't exist in, in the first place, so, I guess, yeah, this story can do whatever it wants with its ghost. Yeah, sure, the ghost can mature, whatever. You know. Yeah. It was only once she was a few paces away from me that I realized she was giggling. <laughs> Hello there, were you worried about me? I, um, well, yeah, I, uh... It's okay, you don't need to trouble yourself over me. I'm one of the strongest swimmers in my class. But you, um, even if you're good at swimming, you shouldn't do it in the river. It's dangerous. It's fine, I swim here all the time. I had nothing... And nothing bad has ever happened to me until I died later on. You know? All the time? We've never met before, but going by her words, this girl must live around here. Um, I live nearby and I've never seen you here before. Maybe we kept missing each other. I'm always swimming here alone, so I probably had to spot. The girl smiled as she brushed a few strands of her damp black hair off her eyes. Though I guess I'm not alone anymore, am I? Say, what's your name? Um, I... My name... My name is Hideaki. Hideaki-kun, is it... It's nice to meet you. To meet you. My name is Chinatsu. Chinatsu Misaki. I hope we can get along, Hideaki-kun. Flashback over? After that day, I started spending a lot of time with Chinatsu. Nope. We attended different schools, so we didn't get to see one another during the day, but that just made our time together all the more special. With school over for the day, the two of us would meet up near the bridge. Upon which we met, and talk about nonsense until the sun began to set. On weekends, we meet up to play a trip, trying new things together. As we found activities we both enjoyed. Every day was fun, even our dreaded family vacations, which I used to spend alone, were tolerable, tolerable, no spacing again, with her presence. Without even realizing it, the two of us became best friends. But on that one fateful day, that all changed. Mom, can I see my cake now? Don't be hasty, dear. We can't start eating until your father gets back from work. But it's getting dark and I don't want and I want to go and play with Nachan. Mom smiled at me, shaking her head. Then go out and play, I won't stop you. Though I'm sure Nachan would rather stay here and listen to me spill all of your embarrassing secrets. Oh, what kind of things don't you want me to know, Hidi? Chinatsu's eyes sparkled playfully as she overheard my mother and I speaking. Even though Chinatsu is normally quiet, she never passed up a chance to make fun of me. She might be like my mom. At least in that regard. Is there something you're trying to hide from me? Is there? Is there? Why yes, of course. Wait, oh that's mom. Why yes, of course. Hidi was telling me the only the other day that he thinks you're really cute. Mom! I pushed and further at my mother's eyes, which made her sputter helplessly with luster. Mom is pretty ticklish, so even if I can't put my hand over her mouth, I can at least shut her up with this way. <laughs> Stop it, Hidi. Hidi, that's too cool. Would you dare do such a cruel thing to your only mother? I will if you keep teasing me. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry. I give, I give you in. I stepped away from her, my arms folded, proud of my achievement. I'm not going to let my mom spoil my birthday, even though she seems to be trying her best to do so. Though she did bake me a birthday cake, so I suppose I can't be too angry with her. I hadn't seen the cake yet, as she, mom kept it stored in the kitchen, which means to let me see it. She worked hard on the cake, likely because this was the first birthday I'd be spending with, my, with one of my friends. Unfortunately, if you see your cake before it's time to eat, it'll give you bad luck. That's what she said, but I think she's making up birthday cakes and brides. But we've been waiting for that all day. Can't we eat the cake yet? Is this where dad, your dad passed away? Or gone to an accident or something? Nope, not until your father gets back. But he wasn't even supposed to go to work today. In order, in order to help out around the house, my father took the day off work. However, he was suddenly called into work, apparently for something only he could sort out. I get that he has to work, but he's been gone all day. So much for a day off. This is boring, I hope that gets home soon. I want to eat my cake already. Don't worry, Hidi, I passed your message on to your father when he called 10 minutes ago. I'm sure he's rushing to get down here as fast as he can. He better be, otherwise I'd be really mad. Haha, <laughs> then I'm sure he'll hurry, Hidi. He knows better than to make you mad. So have faith in your father, he's doing his best. Hm. I powdered, folding my arms across my chest. 
Since he isn't back right now, he's not trying hard enough. Are you mad at him, Hedy? Yeah, I'm mad. I'm really mad. This is supposed to be my birthday and he's ruining it. Oh, in that case, what would it take for you to forgive your father for his gross misconduct, hmm? Well, I'm not sure. I frowned, folding my arms across my chest. I just want him to go as fast as he can no matter what's in his way. Since I'm his son, he should do that for me, right? Yes, yes, I'm sure he's trying his hardest, Hedy. And then he gets into an accident and dies. We just need to believe. After two hours went by and still we heard nothing from that. Yep. There's no car pulling into the driveway, no familiar knock on the door, no cheerful happy birthday, Hedy, not even a phone call. Mom tried to remain optimistic, but I could tell that her smile was filled, faltering. She started to wring her hands together, glancing up at the clock every five minutes or so. What? Where could he be? He didn't like him to stay away from home for so long without calling. Even without me saying anything, she not actually noticed my distress. She reached forward and took my hand, treading her pale fingers between mine. I'm sure you'll be alright, Hidi. Yaki? Hidi, wait. He didn't say Hidi Yaki. She said... Eh. She said Hidi Daki. Alright, that's your name now, Hidi Daki. Maybe that was a traffic jam. Yeah, that's probably it, a traffic jam. I repeated her words under my breath, I'll buy it without any conviction. My words trailed off into the air, lost in the living room, which seemed to be growing colder by the minute. I was indignant about this at first, but now, I can't bring myself to feel angry. Maybe it's because of the frightened look on Mom's face. I'm not mad at that anymore, instead I'm anxious. Mom's right, he would have called if anything came up, why hasn't he phoned us? Just what is going on? At that moment I heard the sound of knocking on the door. Most people in my situation would feel relief upon hearing that sound, but knowing my dad, the sound brought nothing of the sort. After all, dad wouldn't bother knocking at all. He just barged right in, wearing a silly smile on his face, apologizing for his absence. So it was at that moment that I finally realized something had was horribly wrong. I'll get it. Although she tried to act natural as she approached the door, Mom's voice told me that she was very she was every bit as scared as I was. But I think this is a good place to end it. Oh so now we're learning about Kiriaki's backstory, even though I was going for Chiyo's route, which hmm But I real but I realized the endings actually drag out pretty long, like compared to the alone ending and Ryu's ending. This is much longer than um, uh, yeah, real sending. This much longer. So, huh. yeah, so leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter at DMindGaming if you have enjoyed. And I hope to see you again in the next episode.